Good morning, everyone, and welcome to video number 13, Permanent Waving. I know it's your favorite subject, right? Not, okay? It's no one's favorite subject. And to be honest, it's not so heavily tested so much these days. Now, it seems like whenever I say something is not heavily tested, students here, don't worry, it's not tested at all. I didn't say it wasn't tested at all. I said it's not heavily tested like it used to be. When I was in school, a lot of questions on perms. Today, they're not as popular. You have a lot more questions today on highlighting and a lot of questions on curl reformations and curl relaxation of the hair, but you will have a few permanent wave questions. And as I say in every video, it only takes one question to fail your test. So do not write off anything. Don't spend an enormous amount of time studying permanent waves because it's not heavily tested. What is heavily tested is infection control. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't study permanent waving at all because it will be tested. Okay? Now, for those of you joining us for the first time, whenever I reference a page in a textbook, it's in this textbook. I don't own stock in this company. I'm not pushing this textbook. I just realized after 40 years in this industry that the majority of schools use the Milady textbook. So I'm referencing the page that most students will pick up in their book. Now, in our last video, we talked about hair color. Today, we're going to talk again as about permanent waves or what your book refers to in chapter 20 as chemical texture services. Permanent waving, chemical relaxers, and curl reformation. And this is way too much for one video. So we're going to talk today just about permanent waves. In the next video, we'll talk about relaxers and curl reformations. Before we go on, let's do a little quick review of some basic hair facts, which as I said, emphasis on the word basic, but I think they get forgotten as the, the months pass in cosmetology school. The three parts of your hair shaft, the cuticle, cortex, medulla, right? The cuticle is the outside layers, like the scales of a fish or the shingles of a roof, if you live in certain northern climates. The cortex is the inner part where everything happens, the hair color, the, the curl, the patterns of your hair, straight, curly, or wavy. The medulla, which is the hollow tube in the center, which is naturally missing on some people, primarily blondes and redheads. Okay? It has some function, I'm sure, we just don't know what that function is. Keep in mind that all chemical changes occur in the cortex. It's a very straightforward, short state board exam question. In which layer of the hair do all permanent chemical changes occur in the cortex? To get to the cortex, you must open the cuticle. The cuticle can be opened either chemically or by heat. I'm repeating these things because, as I said, this is early on in your, in your education, and sometimes it gets forgotten as more advanced topics come up, but it shows up on your test. Now, there are basically two kinds of permanent waves. There's those that require heat and those that don't. Those that require heat, there are two types. And here's where people get tripped up because these are not words you use every day. They're probably words you never use at all. There's exothermic and there is endothermic. Exothermic permanent waves generate their own heat. If you've done a permanent school, you've seen it. It'll say mix part A with part B and shake well. The bottle gets hot in your hand. This is an exothermic wave. It generates its own heat. There's also called an endothermic wave. It requires heat from an outside source. If you read the directions, it will say, place client under a preheated dryer. Not place client under a dryer and turn it on. Place client under a preheated dryer. You don't want to put the client under a dryer and blows cold air for the next three or four minutes. Exothermic and endothermic. They're big words. They're in your textbook. And although I generally say don't memorize, once again, with vocabulary, I say do memorize. These are not words your customer understands, words you'll ever use, but you will see them on your state board exam. Okay? The most common ingredient in a cold wave perm is ammonium thioglycolate. Huh? That's a whole lot, right? Ammonium thioglycolate. I had a very, very talented student one time named Ruben. Reuben could color your hair six shades of blonde with his eyes closed, but he couldn't pass his test. It took him five times. Finally, he came to me in desperation after being one for about eight months from the school, 
And he said, I, I don't know what to do. I, I can't pass my test. I had him come in every Saturday afternoon for a couple of hours for a month and I worked with him. And you know what I found out after a while? Here's why he couldn't pass his test. He didn't understand all the other terms the state board exam used for an ammonium thioglycolate perm. It's sometimes called a cold wave, not a cool wave, a cold wave. Sometimes it's called an ATG wave, the initials for ammonium thioglycolate, ATG. Sometimes it's called thio, T-H-I-O. It's all the same chemical. It's the, chemi it's the basic chemical in about 90% of all perms. Ammonium thioglycolate, sometimes abbreviated as ATG, or thio, T-H-I-O, or cold wave. The next time he took his test, he passed. And he came back and he said to the class, every one of those was on the test. And if I had understood that, I would have passed by the second time. Probably not the first time, but the second time. Well, it's going to take me five times. It's only going to take you five times. Let his experience help you not relive that. Okay? And I'm sure he's okay if I say this story because he sells it to everybody. Okay? On page 606 of your book, you will see a chart with the pH of seven types of permanent waves. You don't need to know all that. What you do need to understand is this. The vast majority of permanent waves use ammonium thioglycolate, ATG. And the pH is between 9.0 and 9.6. And you do need to know that. The pH of most ammonium thioglycolate perms are between 9.0 and 9.6. Now you get to perm rods or perm tools. Most everyone I know calls them rods. The state board exam calls them tools. There are two kinds. There's concave and there's straight. The concave rods are like this. We're more familiar with them. They're the easier rods to use. The, con the straight rods are, as the word implies, they are straight. They're a little more difficult to use. The concave rods give you a curl tighter in the middle. The straight rods give you a curl more uniform from side to side and end to end. It's a more natural looking result. The difficulty with them is the hair sometimes slides off the ends. They're going to expect you to know on your test the two kinds of perm tools, concave and straight, and what the curl is from both of them. A question they will never miss has to do with end papers, and specifically what is their function? They have three functions. One, they keep the hair smooth. One, they keep the hair straight, and three, they prevent fish hooks. If you've ever done a perm and not brought the papers down past the end of the hair, the hair gets burnt on the end, and for some reason that I don't really understand, turns up in a little hook like this. It's called a fish hook. Now, those of you who are in states that have a practical exam with actually demonstrated, what the proctors are looking for is to make sure that your end papers extend past the end of the hair. On the written test, what can they say? What is the function? To keep the hair smooth, to keep the hair straight, and to prevent fish hooks. Moving on to tool placement. There's on base, there's half off base, and there's off base. An on base curl creates the most volume. It also creates the most breakage because it puts the most pressure and tension on the hair. So what is the value of an on base placement? volume. What's the downside? It creates the most breakage. Hmm? That's the good part and the bad part, right? They will ask you at least one of them. What's the benefit? It creates volume. What's the drawback? It creates the most tension and leads to the most breakage. Okay. A couple of do nots on permanent waving. Number one, do not perm hair with an ATG solution that was previously relaxed with hydrogen, uh, I'm sorry, with, with a hydroxide relaxer. If someone has used a sodium hydroxide relaxer on their hair, which is the most common relaxer, and you perm their hair, it's going to turn purple with purple smoke and the hair's gonna break off. This will not make you their favorite person, okay? Secondly, do not perm hair colored with metallic dyes or metallic salts. Now, a, a very, no, I should never. A pretty well-known example of metallic salt, metallic hair dyes, is a product called Just For Men. Now, obviously, your hair doesn't know if it's on a man or a woman. You could use Just For Men on women. Just For Men is a company. There are others. 
I'm not signaling them out. I'm just saying it's an example of metallic dyes. As the name suggests, there's metal flakes in a glue base that glues onto the outside of your hair. Do not perm somebody's hair with the metallic salts on it. Again, the hair will smoke and it will turn purple and it will most likely break off. Again, you will not be their favorite person. Now, it's not always easy to know if somebody's had metallic dye on their hair. After a while you've been in the industry, you've seen it enough, you know what it looks like. But in the beginning, if you see little gray roots peeking out, but the rest of the hair is brown or black or something, ask them what they used. Don't say that you use metallic salts. They don't know. They, of course they're going to say no. They didn't use salt on my hair. Ask them what they used. Did it take five minutes? Oh, it was great. Just five minutes. There's the answer to your question. Okay. Whether it's just for men or the competitor brand, they take five to seven minutes. Do not perm this person's hair. Mm -hmm. and to close out this video on permanent waving, you see I refer to my notes all the time because I don't want to get too far off track. Okay. When you see purple smoke coming out from the bag around your client's head, get that client to the sink instantly. Rinse their hair, take the rods out, shampoo their hair gently. Okay and send them away. Do not try to do anything else or you'll be sweeping all their hair from the floor. I've only seen this twice in my whole life. Once it happened to me when I was in cosmetology school and once it happened to one of my students about 15 years ago. Okay. Once you see it, and I, I almost wish I could make it happen as a demonstration because once you see it, you do not forget it. When you see smoke purple coming out from the bag on the, on the client's head, you don't forget this experience. Don't let this happen to you. Okay. This brings us to the end of today's video. As I say at the end of every video, please send us your comments. It helps us know what you'd like to hear about in future videos. I know what I think you should hear about, but, but maybe you have different ideas than I do. Okay? Make sure you subscribe and like our station so you hear about future videos. Visit us online, www.cosmetologystateboardexam.com. It's long, but it's simple. Cosmetologystateboardexam.com this free practice test. We have our books available in Spanish and English. We have telephone personnel to speak to you in Spanish or English. We're open from 9 till 9 every day Pacific time, which is noon till midnight on the East Coast. 760-534-4434 okay. and look forward to seeing you on our next video. Thank you.